Hello! Welcome to my special course Scientific and Technical Translation. Today I will tell about neologisms, which are considered to be maybe the biggest translator's problem. Languages are changing as the world is constantly changing. New vocabulary came into existence due to new discoveries, inventions and technologies, such as internet, cell phones, computing and so on. Indeed, new words are invented rapidly and developed quickly thanks to mass communication. They appear and fall into disuse when they have served their momentary purpose. Only a few of them get recorded in glossaries of neologisms of general dictionaries. After the Second World War, English neologisms emerged in a remarkable way. The matter of neologisms becomes a hot sport for linguistic research. The study of neologisms evokes a whole cluster of questions. What are the reasons for the rise of new lexicon? Why are some words are just a flash in a pen? Why are other words successful? What are the qualities that make a word successful? Let's try to consider all these issues. In linguistics, a neologism is a recently coined word, or the act of inventing a word or phrase. Additionally, it can imply the use of old words in a new sense. Neologisms are especially useful in identifying new inventions, new phenomena, or old ideas which have taken on a new cultural context. Suppose you have something new to report, a new element, a new compound, or a new species. How does it get a name? No new science is possible without neologisms, new words, or new interpretations of old words to describe and explain reality in new ways. How could Aristotle have developed the logic of syllogisms? On Newton, the theory of dynamics, without new vocabularies and definitions. They were neologists. For new objects, and new inventions, scientific discoveries, technical theories, the new name is usually the work of one man or of a very few. To reject neologism is to reject scientific development. The word neologism was coined around 1800 and was at that time a neologism itself. A person who develops a neologism is sometimes called a neologist and neology is the act of introducing a new word into a language. A jump of several decades has shown us more research on neologisms. In modern English, one can find some synonyms to the word neologism, such as slang, coinage, buzzword, jargon, singleton, pigeon, terminology, lingos, argot, and even language. Quite a lot of reasons are responsible for the creating English neologisms. Any new thing or new concept which takes place in our society may provide a foundation for the creating of the new words. In the following, I will emphasize four of the major reasons. The rise of new concepts and new ideas in social culture, new discoveries in science and technology, the manufacture of new products in economy, and the events in the field of politics. Development in the science and technology has brought tremendous energy to the improvement of our civilization, and these achievements also find their reflections in language. Technical advancements in a society demand new terms, many of which can be found in linguistics such as hypercorrection, phoneme, allomorph. The progress of science and technology gives occasions for the large majority of new words. For a new thing, we must have a new name. Hence, for instance, motto, argon, and appendicitis. It's interesting to see that the last word didn't exist or was at least too obscure to be recorded when the Oxford Dictionary began to come out in 1888. But we cannot do without it now. Take the word software, for example. This computer term was invented by John Tucky, a statistician at Princeton University in 
Taki is also known for inventing another now famous computer term. In 1946, he used the little word bit that led a decade later to bytes and to today's kilo, mega and terabytes of computer storage and information. Today, linguists distinguish the following types of neologisms. Scientific. Words or phrases created to describe new scientific discoveries. Political. Words and phrases created to make some kind of political or rhetorical point. Pop culture. Words or phrases evolved through mass media content or used to describe popular culture phenomena. Imported. Words or phrases originating in another language. Typically, they are used to express ideas that have no equivalent term in the native language. Trademarks are often neologisms to ensure they are distinguished from other brands. Nouns words. Words coined and used only for a particular occasion, usually for a special literary effect. Inverted. These are the words that are derived from spelling and pronouncing as standard word backwards. And Paleologism, a word that is alleged to be an allogism but turns out to be a long-used word. Usually they are used ironically. There is one more classification of neologisms due to their language acceptance and usage. Unstable, extremely new being proposed or being used only by a very small subculture. Diffused, having reached a significant audience but not yet having gained acceptance. And Stable, having gained recognizable and probably lasting acceptance. So, how do neologisms appear in a language? There are three following ways. The old words are changed in meaning. New words are borrowed. And new words are coined out of the existing language material according to the patterns and ways productive in the language at a given stage of its development. What are the patterns according to which neologisms are formed? The first one is the change of meaning or rather the introduction of a new additional meaning to existing words. You may see the examples on the slide. The second is coinage of new words. With the help of derivation, and you may see the most productive suffixes and prefixes. Then compounding, and of course conversion. And the third pattern is combining forms from Latin or Greek. Thus, aqualung, astronaut, isotope, semiconductor appeared. New objects are continually created in technology. Each language acquires 3,000 new words annually. But in fact, neologisms cannot be quantified, since so many hover between their acceptance and oblivion, and so many are short-lived individual terms or creations. A problem of their translation ranks high on the list of challenges facing translators because such words are not readily found in dictionaries, even in the newest ones. Translators who specialize in Sitiak field come across difficult words almost on a daily basis. This is not just because of the specificity of the text, but also because new discoveries come from foreign countries so quickly that there is no time for the target language to find an appropriate term to describe such offense. The presence of neologisms in the SciTech field is fairly common and it is interesting to talk about the way translators deal with it. Can we really translate neologisms? No, precisely speaking, we convey their meaning. There are some specific ways to do this. The first one is transcription or transliteration. The second is loan translation, which is translation of each of the elements of a compound word or expression from the source language. 
The third way is a descriptive way of translation. When more words are needed in the target language to render the meaning of a source word. And the fourth way, a synonymous substitution. When a source language word is substituted in the target language by its synonym. The presence of English terms is more than evident in the technical scientific field, since most discoveries are usually published in this language. Thus, Russian translators for these terms often lead to direct translations or the use of loan words from English. Here are two tips to help you convey the meaning of a neologism. First, analyze its morphological structure to discover its meaning. And then, Study the word in its textual environment or context. You may see the example of it on the slide. Everything I have told about brings us to the fact that translators resort to using foreign words, or most often leave a given term in English, not being able to find a better option. They probably think that the professionals who will read the translation will be familiar with an English term. Also, language professionals try to convey the meaning of the term through an explanation or definition. This wouldn't be appropriate since, in most cases, the translation would be too wordy, especially in documents where certain technical terms are repeated many times. Unfortunately, there is no organization to regulate such type of terminology. And when the translator tries to consult with a professional, looking for an equivalent in Russian. He will usually say that it is better and easier to keep the term in English. Thus, the translator doesn't have a real and reliable source to resolve these issues. So you see that there is a tendency to leave the terms in the source language or to use some sort of direct translation. Answer the following questions to check the understanding of the information you heard. The second one. You should compile a glossary of social networking and technology neologisms of 40-50 words. Number three. You should read three, four articles in New York Times. Find their neologisms, make a list of them. Then analyze their word formation give their Russian equivalents and define their translation method. You should find not less than 15 words. And the last one, read the article Viewpoint Why Do Tech Neologisms Make People Angry with the BBC? And after, write a short summary of it, of 150-200 words. Thank you for being with me. Good luck!